So let's look at our radical halogenation reaction again. So we'll start with propane and react that with chlorine and H nu. That's light energy, of course, to be our radical initiator. And we'll take a look at what products we get and how much of each one we get. So we can get the primary alkyl halide, which is formed from the primary radical, or we can get the secondary alkyl halide from the, sec from the secondary radical. As we established before, the secondary radical is more stable than the primary radical. So you would expect, uh, if, if thermodynamics was the only thing controlling the reaction, that you would get more of the secondary alkyl halide than the primary. When in fact, what we end up seeing is a one-to-one -one ratio of the two. And thermodynamics, or stability, isn't the only thing uh, helping determine what product we get. Okay, so what else might be happening here? Okay, so that's the question we want to ask ourselves. Why is it one-to-one -one when we would expect mostly secondary? Okay, so we have to go back and look at how this reaction is happening. If the reaction is occurring here, at the secondary position, there are only two secondary hydrogens that can be replaced or that can react. So even though it gives a more stable product, there's only two possible hydrogens that can react. However, if we look at the primary positions here and there, there are actually six primary hydrogens that can react. Even though the secondary hydrogens are more reactive, statistics favor the primary site three to one. Okay, if there was no preference for either one, then the primary should be favored three to one. So what that tells us is that there actually is a preference for secondary. Uh, even with chlorine, which is very reactive. There's a preference for secondary because while we expect statistically to get three to one, three to one statistically, it's actually only one to one, which says that the secondary is definitely more stable. Let's compare now and see the difference between chlorine and bromine. So if you remember what I said before, fluorine is explosive. It's very reactive. It's much too reactive to do these reactions. And iodine is too slow. Fluorine is explosive and iodine is too slow. We have to then rank chlorine and bromine for their reactivities. And so hopefully it makes sense then that chlorine is going to be fast, while bromine is going to be slow. So they're in between. The fluorine is too fast, the chlorine is fast, the bromine is slow, and the iodine is too slow. Because the chlorine is fast, it also makes it less selective. It's going to react as quickly as it can, wherever it can. The bromine, because it's slower, is also then more selective. So what does the selectivity have to do with our products? Well, as we talked about before, if we look at the chlorine reaction, remember we got 50-50 mixture. I said it was one-to-one. -one. So if we're looking at percentages, we had a 50-50 mixture of the primary and the secondary. However, with bromine, because it's more selective, it's slower. It can wait and sort of find the lowest energy place to react. We only get 1% of the primary and 99% of the secondary. This one is selective. This one is fast and not selective. I mean, it still is a little bit because if it was completely unselective, remember we'd get a three to one of primary to secondary. Okay, how is halogenation useful in synthesis? Well, uh, if we want to do a chlorination, it's actually really helpful if, if we have some kind of a symmetrical molecule where we only get one possible product because then we don't have to worry about getting multiple, multiple products since it's not selective. In this case, if we do radical chlorination of cyclopentane, uh, all we get is chlorocyclopentane. Now, 
what's the value of that? Uh, if you remember from before, we've already learned a bunch of reactions that we can do with, uh, with a, a halogen. We can cause an elimination to make an alkene. We can displace it with an alcohol with OH, or we can displace it to make an ether. And then if you remember from alkenes, we can use an alkene to make a diol. We can use it to make an epoxide. We can make a dihalide from it. We can make an alcohol from it. Okay. And we can make the different, different things selectively. So uh, if we can do radical halogenation, it's one way uh, to functionalize a molecule uh, that otherwise isn't very reactive. Really with alkanes, the only reactions that we can typically do with them are things like a radical reaction, like this radical halogenation, or just burn them. That's almost the only things you can do.